right, so this week uh, we are going to start a Catholic approach to business. And so uh, I'm going to introduce you to the first half of the concepts that we're going to study uh, in that Catholic approach to business. And then week two, uh, we'll finish it off. Okay, so the first thing is that uh, in the introduction to the vocation for business leaders, which is the main text uh, that we're going to be using to study the Catholic approach, the introduction essentially says, everyone should practice charity in accord with one's vocation and degree of influence. And uh, this is really, uh, it seems simplistic, but it's also really profound. In other words, everyone from a Catholic point of view has a role to play. And everyone has a role to play based upon their natural gifts and talents and passions. And so every single person uh, in the world, whether you be the garbage man or the president of the United States, um, whether you be a school teacher or whether you be a student, whether you be a stay-at-home mom, or whether you be a CEO, everyone has a role to play and everyone uh, has an important role to play. And this is really fascinating in the sense that from a religious point of view, no matter your social importance, a religious point of view says every fun, every single life has a fundamental dignity, every single life has a fundamental purpose, every single life has a part to play. And so that is um, very Catholic, as opposed to a purely social or political point of view, where your importance is based upon your ability to contribute to society or the uh, role that you play in society. Okay, so when we come to business, this means that business people, just like any other profession or just like any other vocation, have a role to play. And the next week we're going to get into why Catholics view business as good, but business people do have a role to play. Um, and so what then are uh, business people called to do? And for Catholicism, there are two fundamental goals that a business person should seek to enact. One of those goals is to contribute to the common good. So the common good means that your activities, your decisions, your products are making life better uh, for all. They're contributing to the good of all. In other words, they're not contributing to some at the expense of others. They're not liking, they're not making life great for some, but harming others. So in other words, your products, your goods, should be seen in this kind of more social, uh, broader sense. You know, again, not just to enrich me, not just to make your individual life better, but to make our lives together as human beings better. And then human dignity means that our products, our services, our businesses, uh, as business people, should contribute to the sense that everyone has worth and that every life is worthwhile. Every life is, is fundamentally important. It's not to be discarded. It's not to be used. It's not to be degraded. It's not to simply, um, you know, take from others for my enjoyment, um, you know, and not care about you at all. So in other words, we want to make sure that our products and our services operate out of respect, not only for the people that buy the products and services, but also for the employees. So these these principles, these goods, have practical implications as well in terms of how you run your business. Okay, and you can look at that, and I want you to explore that further, and that's one on, on the discussion board. Uh, paragraphs 28 to 34 and 42 are going to talk about what does the common good mean, what does human dignity mean, and so I look forward to getting your responses uh, to those. All right, um, business from a Catholic point of view has to be understood not as a separate entity from the moral realm. It's not like business is one thing, morality is another thing. Uh, Catholics won't accept that position. Uh, and instead, and this is in the Caritas and Veritates um, encyclical uh, that you're assigned to read, the Pope talks about the idea that business has to be understood within a moral context. It is part of a moral world. So the moral world uh, is broader and envelops all aspects of our life, our family life, our home life, our personal life. Uh, the things we like to do for enjoyment, as well as our business, as well as our education, as well as our politics. From a Catholic point of view, the moral world contains within itself all these other dimensions of human life. And so business is one of those dimensions, and business is not separate. It's not something different. It shouldn't operate by different rules. Um, and we're going to get into that in terms of the uh, divided life approach. And when it does operate as a separate realm, 
Then you get, um, uh, and this is one area where Catholicism would critique capitalism, you get into an area where simply it is only desires that matter. Or if you're talking about Milton Friedman, only the value of honesty and only the rule of law. But the, the realm of morality is broader than the rule of law. It is more requirements, more responsibilities. And so, from a capitalist, purely capitalistic perspective, desires are the fundamental thing that a business ought to pursue. Give the people what they want. Give the people what they desire. Whereas, and that could lead to all kinds of products that are very profitable, but morally questionable. You know, think pornography, think violent video games, think drugs, um, you know, think weapons, stuff like that. Uh, all these products may be very profitable. People may want them. People may desire them. But the question from a Catholic point of view is, are they moral? Are they good? And again, that's what it means to keep um, uh, business within a moral context. And you just look at, in terms of pornography, look at Gibson, page 24. You know, he talks about the massive amount of money spent on pornography, more than uh, we spend as a country, as a nation, on sporting events. And so you get the sense then that... Um, it can be very profitable. Business can be very profitable that is not moral. And this goes to the Catholic point that the goal of business isn't simply to meet the desires of customers, but to meet their true needs. <clears throat> and so again, here's where there is a, I think, a distinction, a fundamental distinction between Catholicism and capitalism. Capitalism says follow the desires. Catholicism says follow true needs. And for more kind of analysis of that, look at paragraphs 4 and 24 of that vocation for a business leader. Okay, so a divided life approach to business. So what does that essentially mean? That means that you separate different areas of your life out and you think that they are different components. It's like they live in different houses or they're different kind of subject matters. You separate these different components and essentially what you do is you live by different rules in these different forms of your life. So you might say, as a business person, you know, this is who I am, and that's different from who I am as a family man. Now, <clears throat> this isn't to say that we don't, we don't have to change our demeanor or we don't have to act a little bit differently. I mean, you know, certainly <coughs> at home, you're gonna let loose a little bit more, you're gonna be a little more relaxed <clears throat> than you would necessarily in a business or more formal type of setting. What it's talking about <clears throat> in the divided life approach is essentially that you're going to live by different rules, different values. So that is what a Catholic approach is really going to be opposed to. And the problem <coughs> from a Catholic approach when you do this is that essentially you live, assuming that one of these forms of life is immoral, as if God didn't exist. Essentially what you say is that in this area of my life, as a business person, <coughs> God doesn't exist for me because I'm not going to live according to God's commands or by God's example or by God's influence. And the videos that talk about the divided life approach are, are kind of interesting. They talk about concepts like ethical feeding, where this is how psychologically we can divide our life and ignore some of the immoral things that may occur in our life. When it fades from view, essentially what we're doing is the immoral or the questionable uh, aspects of our decision simply disappear. We focus on something else. We focus <coughs> on something that helps rationalize our decisions. So for example, you know, we're against child labor, but then we see a really nice shirt that we want that is made in a child labor type of factory and subconsciously, we start to forget that child labor is as something we oppose. We're just more focused on, okay, well, if I, you know, I could buy this, it's a nice shirt, it doesn't really hurt anybody. You know, the industry is going to sustain itself regardless. And uh, it's certainly in, in the other videos, the, the magic video, the gorilla video, the point there is that when things fade from view, when we shift our focus, literally the moral components and the morally questionable aspects of our decision-making can literally disappear. They literally become invisible to us. And this is what, or a primary reason that Catholicism has a 
problem with the divided life approach to business, that they don't want those morally questionable decisions to fade from view, to disappear. Um, and that is what happens when we divide our life, when we think that one life, one part of our life operates by completely different rules than another part of our life. And so that is what Catholicism will critique. Okay, so again, you know, when we think about the core principles uh, of a Catholic approach to business, number one, they want to businesses to contribute to common good and to respect human dignity. That is the question that you must ask as a business person. Does my business, does my activity contribute to the common good and respect human dignity? If it doesn't, you are, for Catholicism, in the wrong business. You're in a business that should not exist. And um, so those are the core principles and we apply them. You know, we get this idea that businesses should not simply follow desires, but should follow true needs. We also get this implication that we shouldn't divide our life into separate components that have nothing to do with each other. And more often than not, pretend like the business area of our life is something that operates by different rules, not moral rules. And so next week, we're going to get into further um, principles, further consequences for their implications of the Catholic approach.